We're here in a wheat field in northeast Kansas. This is where all the research was done on wheatgrass, and it was with winter wheat. Wheat that has been growing outside all winter. But even at this stage in February, it's about 10 to 15 times more nutritionally concentrated than wheatgrass grown in a tray. It also doesn't have the high bacteria count that you get from wheatgrass growing in a tray, the yeast, the mold, the other things that can make people a little nauseous. It also tastes good. It tastes wonderful because it's grown the way nature intended. So we're still a few weeks away from when it's traditionally harvested, but this is the wheatgrass in the studies. This is what the research was done on, was wheatgrass grown as nature intended outdoors, specifically northeastern Kansas. Actually, this field was one of the fields that was used in the research. Okay, the snow is nearly melted now. It's a uh, plus five degrees. It's the 15th day of March, and you can see how much this wheatgrass is growing. It's not growing very tall, but it's getting darker and darker green. It's been growing in the sunshine now for nearly six months, and it's still only about three inches tall. But look how much darker green it has become. As the sun, it's converting the sun's energy into nutrients. It needs this long, slow growth in cold weather to get the high nutritional value. Now you're looking at tray-grown wheatgrass, and a lot of people are just amazed how beautiful it is, but let's compare the color of tray-grown with true wheatgrass. Now the tray grown is about as tall as a true wheatgrass, but it's been only growing for seven days in a warm climate, where the true wheatgrass that you're seeing here around it was grown for nearly 200 days through the winter in, a, in its appropriate climate in Kansas. Uh, actually, the, in northeast Kansas, this is where all the research was done. Right here, some of this farm right here is one of the farms that Charles Snobble and George Kohler used for their research. This is not the wheatgrass Charles Snobble used. This is wheatgrass that's been grown in a tray by the people who thought this is what Charles Snobble was talking about. But that's a uh, yuck, yuck, yuck. Okay, now we'll juice some of the wheatgrass that Charles Snobble used in his research here in this same laboratory. 